Hey family, welcome to How Love Works, where we talk about the principles for lasting love. Well, family, let me say this from the outset. Uh, this, this last episode, the reunion show, I took a ton of notes. And uh, I'm going to try to get by as fast as I can through this. So uh, forgive me if I move a little too fast or I take a little bit too much time. I don't, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. But uh, I pretty much call this Tandy versus Reba Blindsided by Mr. Mario. All right. Ready to Love, the reunion show. Let me put it this way. Uh, we live in a, a crazy time. I think we all would agree. We live in a very crazy time from the standpoint that we live in a relationship uh, situation where relationships are just disposable. People kind, you know, they kind of come and go in their relationships with one another. And I wasn't really surprised by the drama that I saw. I was pretty outraged by how Mr. Mario uh, presented himself and how he treated um, Tandy. I, I thought it was rather pathological the way he went about it, you know. I, I really thought it was something kind of mental with that brother, you know, but I digress. I think what I want to do is I want to go f right into uh, the three areas that uh, the, the show kind of put a little emphasis on. So I'm going to start with Nina. Nina, uh, from the time I f first started observing her and, and watching her and and listening to her, I realized that she had a burden on her heart. And uh, she experienced some, some real severe emotional pain. But what I recognized was that she was really uh, more lost and confused and didn't have a lot of clarity on how to deal with that pain. And so in order for her to have that healing, what she I think she really needed to understand is she had to learn how to uh, forgive for love. She needed to learn how to forgive for love. And that really requires a couple of things that you're gonna have to be able to do. And first of all, you have to know what forgiveness is and you have to know what forgiveness is not. But one of the first elements to getting that healing that you need, that emotional healing, is the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do a relationship autopsy. That means that you're going to have to think about what it is that you may have done in your relationship to contribute to the demise of that relationship. And then after that, the second thing you might want to do, uh, because of the pain that you've experienced as a, as a result of the loss of that relationship, you have the right to, to, to grieve the loss of that relationship and experience the pain of that relationship. But shortly after that, ladies, you're going to have to take the time to forgive for love, meaning that if you want to get back out in the world and learn how to love again and experience the, the uh, experience love again, I guess that's the best way to put it, then you... You have to, first of all, understand what love, I'm sorry, what forgiveness is. And forgiveness basically is, in the case of Nina, forgiveness is not for her partner. Forgiveness is for her. And number two, forgiveness is about taking back, you guys have heard this before, taking back her power. And number three, forgiveness is, is not about her yesterday. Forgiveness is about her today. And number four, forgiveness for her is making peace with what she didn't get. That is what forgiveness is about, is making peace with what she didn't get. Now, what forgiveness is not, forgiveness is not um, condoning. Forgiveness is a reason but it's not an excuse. Forgiveness is a reason, but it's not an excuse. All right. Forgiveness does not excuse poor behavior. It, uh, forgiveness does not 
require you remain in a relationship with an abuser or with a, 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 a habitual offender. It doesn't require that. And forgiveness does not require you give up feeling the pain that you've experienced in a loss. All right. Now, I want to move on to Jimmy and Kimber. And the takeaway right off the top with those guys, which took me by surprise, was real men don't cheat. Now, I'm pretty uh, new to that phrase. I'm not really that familiar with it. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> but after I heard Brent go into a little explanation on what it meant, now I kind of understood why Jimmy had like, uh, he had an epiphany about the concept of real men don't cheat. Because initially, Jimmy was acting like a rebel without a cause, and he he was kind of blowing himself up. But he kind of looked small to me by taking that particular posture when she was only seeking uh, reconciliation with the brother. But after Brent did what he did in terms of explaining the integrity of what the term real men don't cheat and about the honor, I think he was motivated from hearing that he decided to give a, um, a, a heartfelt um, apology to Kimber. And I, I really felt that from that brother. And so I think the takeaways I got from that, because I hadn't heard that phrase before. I, I, again, I thought it was funny. But the takeaways I got from that was this, that real men don't cheat on a woman it doesn't cheat on a woman, obviously. Real men don't cheat a woman out of permanent love. Real men don't cheat a woman out of a family. Real men don't cheat a woman out of emotional security. Those are the takeaways that I got from Kimber and from Jimmy. Now, let's jump into last but not least, let's talk about <laughs> the crazy cray that I saw with Mario, Riva, and Tandy, especially Riva and Mario. All right. Uh, my final observation is pretty much this. Uh, I watched... <laughs> I watched that ghetto, that ghetto nonsense that was coming from Riva and from Mario. And what I saw with Mario was that Mario was saying a lot of things at that time, but it appeared to me that what he was saying was totally calculated and uh, totally deprecating, trying to uh, come off as authentic and uh, he, he cleverly used, you know, compatibility and maturity as a reason for terminating his relationship with Tandy. But here's where I see where he lost some credibility with me. And his, his, his credibility with me kind of went off the cliff. And I got a chance to see a glimpse of the darkness inside that guy. And here's, here's how I kind of saw it. I looked at it like that. Here's a guy who was sitting calmly next to Tandy, right? And rather eloquently, he was talking about how great of a woman she was while he was about to deliver, at the same time he was talking about how eloquent she was, he was about to deliver a devastating sucker punch right into her heart. So what he did in essence is he blindsided her and what I saw, he had no remorse, none whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I was personally repulsed by that. It was totally reprehensible what he did. And, 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 I, and I, 
I said, man, I can't believe this brother. All that talk that he did in the last episode, and he twisted like he did a 180 like it was nothing. All right? And what was also interesting was that to add insult to injury, he the brother had the temerity to not even care about her feelings. I mean, at all. Not at all. Because what he did, he was declaring after he had talked all this stuff up and said all these things about her, and then he sucker punched and blindsided her. He acted like some imposter. Then he turned around and he declared that he still found love. And we now know, <laughs> right, who that new love interest was, right? Now, when I saw that and I heard all of that, and I was like, man, that was some cold nonsense. That was some cold mess for a brother to do like that. And he did it in front of the entire cast. He did it in, in front of the whole family, the Owens family, the, the whole world for that matter, right? And, of course, when the brother stood up and he casually walked over to Reva, I can see the enormous glee in her eyes, right? And he looked kind of arrogant and entitled. You know, I guess that's that uh, only child syndrome thing going. And, you know, at that point, I realized that both of them, they kind of thrived on some drama. And when I heard Reva say these words, <laughs> the best woman won, I was like, man, come on now. Then she had the nerve, she turned around, and she kissed the boy. And you can see she was gloating. And you can see that she was kind of gloating about how she outsmarted Tondi. But here's the real. This is what I got. This is what I got. It says, the Bible says you're going to reap what you sow. This ain't going, this ain't going to go the way you think it's going to go. Okay. Reva and Mario. Number two, if they'll do it with you, they'll do it to you. That's number two. Understand that, Reva. Understand that, Mario. Number three, past behavior is a good predictor of future behavior. And number four, this is for my homegirl, Tandy. I hope you're listening, sweetheart. Never, never, ever, ever, ever invest more into a relationship than you can afford to lose. Never, ever, ever invest more into a relationship than you can afford to lose. That's my time. I thank you for yours. I catch you on the other side. God bless you.